Welcome to the Jill on Money Show. It is Thursday, February 1st, and we are here trying to take the mystery out of your financial life and sometimes out of the economy. Let's concentrate on the economy for today, because yesterday, as expected, the Federal Reserve Board left interest rates at five and a quarter to five and a half percent. So here's something fun. I thought it would be interesting for you guys to listen to my segment on CBS Mornings with the whole crew intact before they all head off to the Super Bowl. That is Nate Burleson, Gail King, and Tony DeCopel. And so let's play that segment from yesterday, and then I'll come back after. We are talking about interest rates, which are at a 23-year high. The Federal Reserve wraps up a two-day policy meeting later today. Officials just might give us a hint on when we can expect some relief from those high interest rates. And right now we have CBS News uh, business analyst Jill Schlesinger joining us right now. And she is here to give us everything we need to know. So let's kick it right off but with Nate, the Federal Reserve. But you think Reserve. of money moves. Do you think of Cardi B or Jill? I think a dollar, <laughs> dollar Jill, y'all. Thank you. Uh, so what can we expect with the announcement today? A whole lot of nothing. They're likely Uh-oh. to leave oh. rates at five and a quarter to five and a half percent. And the real reason is that they need more evidence. They want to see that inflation is contained. And this is an easy meeting to say, and eh, we need a little bit more data. So this really matters for people because if you're trying to buy a house, this is going to increase what you have to pay monthly on a mortgage, right? Well, it, it, you know what? It impacts every single person. And the reason is you're either a saver or you're a borrower. And this is why interest rates are so important in the economy. Mm. So if you're a borrower for short term interest rates to stay at these high levels, it means things like credit cards stay at high levels. It means auto loans. When it comes to mortgage rates, the Fed doesn't directly control mortgage rates. But when we think that mortgage rates are coming down over time, that's what will give relief to the mortgage market. We've already seen a full percentage point drop from the peak that we had in the fall. Still expensive for a 30-year, but we should see relief later this year. Yeah, but you just said probably nothing is going to happen. So if you're sitting there trying to buy a house, you're thinking, this is still not my time? Well, I think just the idea that there could be action later in the year. So right now, when we say, oh, we're looking for clues, like get out your Fed decoder ring because you want to read between the lines. (laughs) Don't have one of those. Yeah, I have one. It's great. I have it for all of us. Um, And what we're likely to see is Jerome Powell, who's the Fed chair, is going to give a speech and he's going to say, I think, hey, inflation has really come down. And it has. You know, the Fed has been successful in bringing down the CPI from over 9% on an annualized basis to now about three, three and a half percent. That's the good news. The problem is we are still with high prices. Mm. And that means that the Fed is likely to say we're probably done raising rates. We're likely to lower them later this year. Good news for borrowers. But if it's good news for borrowers, don't you want to know about my fabulous tip of the day? I was yeah, what's your tip of the day? Hold up, pen and pad ready. Yeah, okay. What's going on? So it's a borrower. You know, rates are going to come down. If you're a saver, saver, what should you do right now? Well, interest rates are still high. Maybe you should lock in a short-term CD, a certificate of deposit with your favorite bank or online uh, bank. You can get four and a half or five percent. A great place to park your emergency reserve fund, which I know Gail loves. For how and, long? For how long? Uh, well, I think that if you have an emergency reserve fund, which is six to 12 months of your living expenses, put it in a six-month or a 12-month mm-hmm. CD. If you know you've got tuition checks to pay over the next couple of years, maybe you start to say, well, you know what? I'll put a little money in a six-month when the next bill is due. 12 months, then... Mm-hmm. 18 months. These rates will not be here in three or six months. They just will not. Okay. So this is what my life is like. I don't know, like a little glimpse in. I know we usually just talk about you, but I thought this would be kind of interesting or maybe not, but you'll let us know. Anyway, so I do CBS mornings. And then later that afternoon, when the Federal Reserve announces the actual rate decision, I'm on the set at CBSN, that is our streaming network where you can get on all the different streaming channels like Roku and Apple and all that. And uh, I was so excited because I get to talk for a much longer time. And the reason why that's uh, useful, especially when it comes to the Federal Reserve, is that it gets into more of how Federal Reserve decisions actually impact you. And I can go somewhat deeper. And I always like that. So the hosts of CBSN in the afternoons, Lana Zak and Errol Barnett, and I have a nice lengthy conversation. And here it is. One person would say like, well, wait a minute, we're making great progress. Another person would say, yeah, but prices are still high. 
So we complained when prices were high, like gas was over five bucks a, a gallon. And people would say to me, well, you see it every single day when you go fill up your car. But they don't say, oh, I'm so psyched. It's only three twenty five or three fifty. And so there are moments where you say you discount the good news. I do think it is fair to point out that prices from before the pandemic, if you go back a few years, prices are actually higher overall. That happens, right? Because every year we do have some inflation. So prices do go up every year. It's kind of like we got a decade's worth of the pre-pandemic inflation rate in like three years. Mm. So if you say to me, how are consumers doing right now? It depends. If I have a job where I got a big raise over the last few years, chances are if I'm in the lower half of income earners, those people actually have been okay because their wages went up by more then prices have gone up. They got more than a 20% increase. However, if you're in the middle and you didn't get a wage increase, or maybe you said, I just want to work home a day a week and I'll keep my wages fine, inflation spikes, you're in trouble. In At the end of the day, each family feels it differently. But one of the big challenges with inflation, and it's why economists and the Fed hate it so much, is it kind of implants in our brain. We have a hard time letting go, even when the news does turn better. So it really does depend where you are in the economy based on how you think things are going. So give us a bit of a reality check. You have this news now. The Fed is um, holding interest rates steady where they are. But we saw a robust labor market in 2023. This year seems to be taken up by a lot of headlines of layoffs at major companies. Where are we in reality and what does that have to do with this decision today? We see a lot of big name companies laying off. And part of that is what they're calling right sizing. I mean, you've been downsized and lost your job, so it doesn't feel right if yeah. you're the one who lost your job. That said, a lot of the big technology companies, they loaded up on employees. Mm-hmm. I was just looking at this because I went back in time. I said, well, how many employees did Amazon have? Back in uh, the end of 2019, it was about 800,000 global employees. They ballooned up to 1.6 million by 2021 when Mm. everybody was buying online. They're shedding some of those jobs. They're not going to be at 1.6. They're shedding maybe 100, 150,000 of those jobs. So is that a, is that, does that mean the technology sector is in decline? No. But there are some industries, (coughs) media, which are in decline, where you have job losses that are not coming back. Or if you work at a local newspaper that shuts down, that job is not coming back. So what I would say about the economy is, you know, not unlike the housing market where it's location, location, Mm -hmm. location, it is industry by industry. You are correct. The labor market was far stronger than expected last year. It really was. And we saw job creation slow down towards the end of the year. We see that we'll have a, a, a jobs report coming out this Friday. We're expecting, I don't know, maybe there'll be 150, 160,000 jobs. If it's a minus sign, people are going to be freaking out. They're going to say, oh, my God, I'm scared of recession. The Fed kept rates high for too long. And if it's way more than that, people are going to say, oh, my God, the Fed has to keep rates for higher for longer. At the end of the day, we don't know. I think the Fed is going to cut rates sometime this year, but there'll be more data. Guess what? We don't really have to worry. If you're an investor, the stock market has been just blowing up on the upside in the last three months. You're happy. If you own a home. Your equity has been increasing. That's great news. If you have a job, that's great news. If you don't have a job, that's bad news. So it comes down to almost person by person. I would really advise people to stop really trying to interpret the headlines, stick to your game plan. And look, if you're working in an industry that's consolidating, you'd have to be a moron not to be looking around and saying, what are the places that are hiring? Where can I go? What happens if? Someone called my podcast today and they said, my company was just taken over by another company and I'm scared I'm going to lose my job because the new company doesn't need all of us. So I said, have you looked for a job? Because not yet. I said, start looking for a job because these are the things you can do to protect yourself. It's also why we want people to have an emergency reserve fund. It's also why we want people to try to pay down their credit card debt. It's also why we want people to just do automatic investing, get on a game plan so that you're not blindsided by something. The things that you can control, great. The things you can't control, I'd stop worrying about them. 
That's Great message. Good advice yeah. in life. Uh, <laughs> Jill, I, I really liked you sort of saying that it, it's industry by industry, person by person. Who are some of the winners and the losers by the Fed's decision not to lower rates this go round? Well, I mean, if rates are high and you're a saver, you are ecstatic. You are ecstatic because you say, oh, my gosh, I'll still make money. I'll still earn more interest on my high yield savings account. I will still be able to lock in a CD, a certificate of deposit at a higher rate. And who would do that? Well, maybe if you know you have to pay a tuition check in six months, I'd say, OK, I have $20,000 check. I got a right. I'm going to put $20,000 in a six month CD. I'm locked in. Maybe you think you're going to buy a house within the next year and you want to stash that money and have it available to you. You want to make sure that you can take advantage of high rates for as long as they last. What I can say is this will not be the case for the whole year. I think you'll look back on this time and say, oh, gosh, I wish I had my safe money locked in. And you have an opportunity now. You're not at the peak, but you have an opportunity. If you're looking for a mortgage, just remember, the Fed does not directly influence mortgage rates. Mortgage rates are still high, but they have come down by a full percentage point since the peak in the fall. And interestingly enough about those mortgage rates, just the idea that the Fed could start to cut start and the break. interest rate cycle is going to change is going to bring yeah. down mortgage rates. And so that's great news for home buyers. Still a very tight housing market. So all that considered then, Jill, especially as you say, hey, focus on what you can control. Uh, we don't know when the Fed might cut rates, if at all, later this year. But it sounds like you're saying that if you've got money that you don't need soon, keep that in a high yield savings account. Maybe you get a 5% return on that. If you know you won't need money for, for a longer amount of time, still consider CDs, well, certificates think, of deposit, because their rates will decline. Later well, I would say this. If you know you need access to money at no matter what, and that's the most important thing to you, keep it in a high yield savings account. If you know you've got a time horizon that's within a year or 18 months or two years, you can put it into a CD. If you don't need your money for five years or 10 years and you somehow thought you knew when to time the stock market, <laughs> you know you couldn't. And so what that means is you've got to get a game plan together to get your money reinvested. One thing I can tell you about these layoffs that you mentioned, as much as it is just painful, if you're on the receiving end of it, if you are an investor, you will notice that every time a company announces layoffs, the stock of that company rises because that company can no longer mm -hmm. keep prices high in order to make money. So how are they going to keep delivering earnings as for, as to their stockholders? Anyone who has a retirement account as a stockholder, they're going to cut. And that stinks if you're the person being cut. But if you're an investor, you are actually the beneficiary of these cuts. I know some of the stuff I said in the morning, but, you know, it's a different audience in the morning and the night. But I am just so grateful that uh, when I prep for something and then it actually happens the way I've prepped for it, it's so much easier. I mean, imagine if they'd actually done some sort of strange thing like raised rates on me. So we'll see what happens next in the world of rates. It is going to impact everybody and we'll be here to hold your hand through it and talk you through it. So if you've got a financial question and one that is directly tied to interest rates, of course, we're happy to talk to you. Just go to our website, jillonmoney.com, click the contact us button and do let us know if you would be willing to come on the air. Check out all of our content. It lives on our website. And of course, you can subscribe to this program on the Odyssey app or wherever you find your favorite podcasts. Don't forget to lift someone up. Change your work, change your wealth, change your life. Thank you for listening, and we'll talk to you tomorrow. Tomorrow.